Here's another tree in the Fabaceae family. It's in the genus Robinia, and the specific epithet is pseudoacacia. That means false acacia. This is black locust. We're going to take a closer look at some of its identifying characteristics. One of the first things to note on a mature black locust is the thickness and this light brown overlapping or interlacing furrows of its bark. To me, it looks a bit like rope sort of laid over on top of each individual strand of a big thick rope laying on top of each other. To give a sense of size, you can see my hand in here, the pretty good depth, mostly flat topped, and it's sort of irregular but fairly thick pattern. Black locust has alternately arranged leaves and buds. By my thumb, you can see the swollen base of the petiole. That, inside that petiole, would be the newly developing bud, and so the leaf scar should encompass or encircle the entire bud. Also, right here where I've pulled off a leaf, I can just start to feel the development of little spines. On young black locust, newly growing, you might see very thick, almost rose-like spines coming out. These are pinnately compound leaves. The leaves here are fairly, the leaflets, excuse me, are fairly thin, and they're more or less oval shape, and typically there is a terminal leaflet. This gives you a sense of its size. Remember, this is the petiole, and then the rachis is the centerpiece that all of the individual leaflets are attached to. Black locust form is typically a single trunk with narrow branching or narrow crown. This trunk happens to curve a little bit as it's being shaded out by the tree next to it, but it still maintains a single fairly strong trunk with just a few branches coming off. This is in the Fabaceae family, and so the seed would be a pod that would hang down. In the spring, this produces a beautiful white flowers, uh, quite fragrant, typically around June.